Hello and welcome to SAF TV. I am your host, Natasha Brown, and on this particular episode of SAF Exclusive, we'll be speaking with one of Nigeria's finest content creators and stand-up comedian. As you know, laughter is a medicine for the soul. So stay tuned because this conversation is going to be laughter-filled and also insightful as pertaining to that particular industry. So don't go anywhere. And yeah. All right, so with us here today is Wanda the Talk. I don't know, I was about to call you Wanda the Talker, and then I remember you said <laughs> you literally have to correct people sometimes, and then sometimes you don't. No, sometimes I just let them call whatever enters their mouth. I get a lot of people call me Wanda the Talker, Wanda the Talker. The other person even come on the talk. You have I just say Wanda. I said, I saw the one that didn't sound like a manager. After that, I won. <laughs> right? But actually, wonder the talker. All right, so let's get right into it. What is your actual name? Because, you know, I'm wondering. That is not your actual name, though. My name is Sans 29. My name is Faith. But mm. everybody has Faith, either male or female. So my full name is Ukemo Faith Ikechi. But mm. Faith is my name, yeah. Okay, interesting. How did you come about the name Wonder the Talker? Okay, um, okay. Like you're wonderful and then you talk a lot. Okay, more. Uh, <laughs> firstly, I thought people, my son name is Okay Won, so Wonder. Oh, okay. Mm, so, I just, so, so when I was just very Wonder, people were calling me MC Wonder, and I don't like that MC thing placed mm -hmm. to my name. I just wanted a clean name, so I just had to make it uncomfortable for them. So mm -hmm. I said Wonder the Talk. That's already enough. No need adding MC. Wonder the talk. That, that would be too, be too much. much. So just ahead. So I just wanted it to be too much. So wonder the talk. All right. Interesting. All right. So let's just really get right into your backstory. What's your backstory? Okay. Well, uh, you know, even before I started doing content creator and started comedian, I was into music, right? I did music for a couple of years. I can remember a particular time I went to an event. I did the joke and I sang. They were like, oh, bro, forgot some music. Leave the comedy. You were but, that good? Yes, to, to them. <laughs> I don't know if I'm good. <laughs> so, so I, uh, to cut it, a story short, a year after I stopped the music, I went into comedy. I was opportune to perform at the same venue again. And this and they were like, bro, continue with comedy. So at the end of the day... So you can't, you can't even bank your talent on the crowd because one time they said continue with music and now it's comedy. So literally, I just started doing what I love the most. Right. So instead of me to make you dance, I'd rather make you laugh. <laughs> but you can still make us dance and laugh at the same time. No, I've though. left music. <laughs> I've left music my focus. <laughs> right, interesting. All right, so but but what what did you study? Okay, you I'm know, still in school. Oh, you're so oh, good. I'm studying physics and electronics. Done in my final year. That is such a far cry. Physics and electronics, content creation. Okay, literally, some persons <laughs> ask me, Ndoka, why? It's a far cry. Why didn't you just go for theater art and film studies? I'm like, okay, those in the film are not like it, but I don't want to study what I know. I want to study what I don't know. Mm. You consider me a good actor, so why studying? Do you know most of the successful actors are not even graduates of theater and film studies? Mm -hmm. So some persons are blessed with it, some persons learn it. I think I'm blessed with it. So let me just focus on something I'm not blessed with, which is physics and electronics. So let me learn something I don't know while mm -hmm. I do what I know. Is there any correlation between both? Is there any, do you bring a particular learning from this um, course of study and then translate it into content creation and some part of... Is there any correlation somewhere or is just totally really, really far are, from each other? Yeah, I think they're very different from each yeah. other. Mm. I think they're very different from each other. Because I'm thinking physics and electronics, so like you're dealing with cameras and all of that, so I'm thinking like there's some dynamics. Since I did that school, I never see camera. <laughs> <laughs> Since I did that school, we never dismantle camera. <laughs> But literally, like the only correlation or the only relationship they have is the okay. seriousness. To succeed in both fields, you need to be very serious. Right. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Okay, so let's actually go into your foray into content creation, this whole transition, because you started as a stand-up comedian and but now you are full fully almost into content creation, skip making and all of that. So let's let's have a feel of what your transition was like. Okay, literally, I'm into like whatever thing that makes you laugh, I'm into that. As far as it doesn't hurt at the end of the day. So that's why I focus on making comedy skits, mm -hmm. right? So I was literally a stand up comedian doing little of videos. That was before the information I had, because life is information. The difference between the both of us is the information I have that I don't have, or the one you have that I don't have. Mm -hmm. So I was not informed as I then that making videos is actually going to make my craft better. So the information was not there. Probably because we didn't know you could actually earn from it, right? We are mm. so limited in thoughts to let just crack jokes, crack jokes, organize events, get people right together, and so mm. on and so forth. Meanwhile, the business was actually evolving. So it started evolving from just being a stand-up comedian to actually start making videos 
online, right? So I actually uh, left stand up comedy. I didn't leave stand up comedy. I'm a stand up comedian. I'm carrying I'm carrying them in both hands. Mm. Stand up comedy and content creating, right? So three years ago, that's when I actually started doing content creating properly. That was like the heat of COVID. Exactly. When hungry, one came in. <laughs> and now go. That's nothing. Yeah, no. <laughs> you are not die down, not you die again. I nearly go, right? But it's, it's actually a very wonderful story. Mm. I, I, will, this, I just uh, finished my event on the 20th of August, which is this month, one that should never end. So the first attempt was like three years ago. That was during the March period, yeah? So I, I started coming, I kept, uh, coming up with my publicities and so on. One that should never end. I reached out to Sabinus. We were in good terms, in perfect terms, from our of comedy days, Uniport days, and so on. So he was already succeeding in content creating. So I just reached out to him. I said, boss, I'm having an event. So, so they, please, I want you to be in the picture. He said, no problem. Send me your picture. He sent and all that. So I added him to the bill. The whole coronavirus stuff, I wasn't able to hold the event. So I can't begin using it. Before a day to the day I can't, I postponed the show. I used my last card. Went to buying wines. I will put on my table. Oh. My last card. That was in time when I had in my account. I said, okay, if I invest, I'm into the show. You don't do the show. People go buy a ticket and I will regain. Next day, lockdown. That was the first time I see eating wine and bread. Uh, you I, I, did the communion, actually. Ah, no, I survived <laughs> on the blood and the flesh. <laughs> it was very terrible. So during the lockdown, I, there was no way to entertain people. There was no social garden. There was no events. The few performances I had were online. Perform on Instagram Live. Perform on, on video calls, and which wasn't steady. So mm -hmm. I just kind of ventured into skate making. So I wasn't. I didn't have an iPhone then because most, we make most of our videos with iPhone. Most. Then on, on some occasions, like when you want, to start, you want when you want to do series and short films, mm. you can't use the camera. But all these are tactics ones, one minute skit to tend to use phone. So I didn't have an iPhone as a dead. So I was borrowing my friend's iPhone six. I will borrow, we make the video. He will help me to edit. I didn't know how to edit, so and send to me, and I post. And so small, 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 small. And I met my destined helper. Then my life now changed. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. And and the thing that is interesting about you is the fact that. The way that you turned a negative situation into something that, prof that, that gave you profit at the end of the day, because, I mean, it was COVID. People were talking about, oh, I'm depressed, I'm tired, or oh, my mental health is down. And that's not even downplaying it, actually. We had all of that going on. People were wondering what to do next and all of that. But you saw that gap, that opportunity, and then you translated it into you know skip making and then and then you, you didn't even try to even make excuses to say i don't have the a good phone you had to just you know work with a friend's phone because you you know you meet people these days and they're like oh i don't have the phone to do that and all of that but there is always an excuse if you want to give mm. there are good reasons to give up very good reasons people will give you be like oh, just give up you don't try <laughs> there are actually very good reasons to give up if you want to give up right. there are good reasons not to as well if you don't want to give mm. up right so i would just i had sometimes i just tell everyone only myself i get so at that point you'd be like, not only you, not only you get yourself. It's either I give up or I keep going. So I did, I wasn't giving excuse of ah, I don't have an iPhone. When I get an iPhone, I will start. I was borrowing an iPhone to shoot. Oh. Me and that was it couldn't call people now, no movement, right? I was yeah. shooting with my neighbor. Anybody that available, I just come with the story. Let's shoot, let's post. Let's shoot, let's post, let's shoot, let's post. I didn't know how to edit, I was begging, bro, help me now, help me now, help me cut video, help me cut video, and so on and so forth. So uh, and I think again a hunger. Oh, no, 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 no. If I'll you're hungry, you, you think your faster. Community. If you're hungry, you think faster. You think how to come out of this hunger. Yeah. How they catch me? Nobody said they like you. I was hungry. <laughs> now you are seeing food that I appreciate. And I... Hungry beat me for lockdown. So I was, I was thinking, what would I do to make money? I started competing for the, uh, some, some comedians. Started doing uh, stand-up comedy competitions on Instagram Live. Oh. I would go up and I would win. Win at 2005. 2005 had the value of... 2005 has the value of 200 and... 250,000 there now to mess yeah. at them. Right, Jesus right, Christ. Right. Compete, win to five. If you don't pay me, I swear for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, actually, now, I mean, you've talked about this whole process and your story is really interesting. And um, I, I'm, I'm interested in knowing, like, more about your relationship with Sabinus, right? Because I remember. I mean, he was pivotal to what you are now and still is, you know, possibly. But the fact that you reached out to him and said, oh, I'm doing this and all of that, please come on board. And then it didn't happen. And then before you translated into content, you know, creation and all that. But I, I, just give us a little snippet into that relationship. Okay, firstly, 
I want to say, anywhere, if you see this video, just tag Sabine and tell, tell him, God bless you. Right. <laughs> because literally, without me, Sabinus is Sabinus. Mm -hmm. Without Sabinus, I don't think there would have been an Ondoka. Because he kind of encouraged me to continue. Oh, Sabinus has. That is, I, okay, if I buy a motor today, Naim, I'll be that today, Naim. That's what I get tomorrow and I see Sabinus do one. Because he could decide to be doing his thing without me, and mm -hmm. he could continue. He could decide not to help anybody, too. It won't affect him. Right. There are a lot of people that made it in Portacosi that did not help anybody, and they are still at the top. Mm -hmm. It won't fall you. This is not a Nigerian movie where you don't help people. Then you now fall, then the people will not rise. He could decide not to help anybody from Portacosi and just help That's others. It. You mm -hmm. understand? But, mm -hmm. but the fact that he decided to pick us is something I'm very grateful for. So, this is the actual story, right? I was in good terms with him from standard comedy days. So, during the lockdown, I was coming up with little, little content. So I came up with an idea. I came up with an idea that needed somebody to cry at the ending. So this, as a creator, you're welcome to be good ideas. Mm -hmm. If people tell me, okay, I have a skit, I want to listen because that might be a breakthrough video. If you, you might not see the video that might actually make me go very, very, I might not really come from my own head. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. I believe that was what he, that's what he did then. He was like, okay, let me hear. I told him it was like, ah, it's a great, it's a good story. But since it's coming from you, I can't shoot it without you. That that's why he's a creative. I'm not a creative. Mm. Creative are people that steal your idea. Yeah. Creative to work with you. Interesting. So he was like, ah, since it's your idea, let's do it together. So I was opportune. Were you, were you initially telling him the idea for him to shoot it himself or yes. in collaboration with, with you? himself? Oh really? Himself. Wow. Himself. But I, you were going to get the credit if he had. I wasn't done that. really interested in getting your credit. I. Before I met Sabino Stride, there are a lot of contents I actually like share ideas with people. They do. I, I'm not concerned about the credit. If I'm giving, I'm giving, right? But as God may have it, he was like, I'm going to do it with you. I said, ah, thank you. And he called me and we did it. It came out well. It was a police video. And he was like, bro, you're very good with this police thing. And he, just, he, he said it from today's forth. Any police video I'm going to make, you're going to be involved. So that was, I was prepared. And Sabine is telling me that was an opportunity. Do you know what I did after that? What? I went back to the house and started thinking for more stories and I'll call him. But see this idea, I'll say, good, let's shoot it. I'll go again, we'll shoot. So I was like coming up with ideas just to be in that picture. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't just relaxing for him to call me. I was calling him. Say, so boss, I get this idea and go say, no, okay, calm down. I said, no, listen, listen. Yeah, so right, I was like right, putting right. it, putting it, was like, okay, fine. Can, apart from police, can I do something else? I said, try me now. So he put me in a different <laughs> role. So I did my you. part. Put me in a different role. I did my part. From there, we just continued. Wow. Interesting. I love that so much. And there's so much I even have to ask, you know, based on what you've said so far. But before I go into that, um, we'll just go on the short break and um, we'll be right back. Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, I'm still your host, Natasha Brown, and this is Stav Exclusive. And I'm here with the wonderful stand-up comedian, content creator extraordinaire, Wanda The Talk. Yeah, and also <laughs> Sergeant, <laughs> Sergeant Nduka. I've been cracking up the whole of the show, the whole of this interview. I've just been cracking up. You are what you say you are. You were talented. Absolutely. I can't even lie about that. I've been totally laughing. And I think I'm red-faced <laughs> at this <laughs> point in time. <laughs> okay, so let's let's get right into it. Um, before we went on the short break, you were talking about your whole relationship with Sabinus and how he was pivotal to who you are now. And um, one thing that stands out is how you took advantage of, positive advantage of the opportunity to co-create with him. So you started with actually selling him an idea, not that he was even going to incentivize you or pay you money or give you credit. Just, I have this idea, take it, shoot it. And then he comes up with the thought of, no, it's your idea, let's do this together. And because you saw that avenue, you started banking on that and then, you know, telling him more of your ideas and all of that. But we live in a time where 
People want credit for the idea. People want to be in it. People want some incentive, even when they've not gotten anywhere. So what do what you have to say about that in respect to how you handled your own um, upcoming story? Okay, literally. Um, firstly, I won't just call it idea selling, right? I, was, I, was, I would call it opportunity meeting preparation. Mm. Meeting Sabinus was an opportunity and I was prepared. Right. I was prepared in the sense that I have been kind of like, I'm in the, I'm in the system. I'm in the system, but he's way ahead of me. So when he said, when I got the chance mm -hmm. to work with him, I was already prepared. Imagine I had, let's say, I literally had nothing to offer. Yes. That would have been an end line. But mm -hmm. I was prepared for the opportunity. So as it came, I just kind of continued. That's it. And, and, and then, so how about the part of, you know, creatives actually wanting some incentive for whatever ideas that they have, even when they have not gotten anywhere yet. How about that aspect? Firstly, I'm not desperate. I'm, I'm not in a hurry. When somebody's in a hurry, they start looking for credit up and down. For leave credit and talk about results. Right. If we can talk about results, why don't we just come up, hey, hey, one big artist, Steve, my song. Calm down, my bro, walk. <laughs> <laughs> if you start trending for a negative reason, it doesn't help. It might just give you that little attention. After that, the boy just kind of leaves you and focuses at the better future. But, but does that encourage people to see, to see um, on other people's ideas? Because, I mean, like you said, Sabinus is a creative, not a creative. Right? Okay. I got that part right. But there are these people who will literally take your idea consistently and not give you any form of credit. Yes, we understand that you're an underdog still, but is it right? Okay, literally it's not right. It's not right, but uh, just be careful and do what you need to do. Mm. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Okay, interesting. All right, so it brings us to this question now. At what point in time did you realize content creation was profitable? Like, okay, this is it. This is where it's at. This is my oil. At what point did you realize that? When Sabinus took me to Lagos. You know, the first time I traveled to Lagos, in fact, the first time I entered a plane and Sabinus put me, I can literally <laughs> not mention anything about me without mentioning Sabinus. Right. So he was like, uh, he, he just chatted me up. He was like, have you been to Lagos? I said, no. He said, we like to go. I said, why not? <laughs> when we were in Porta he you just keep hearing that everybody's a selling. Mm. But even the people you're looking, you're looking up to, I won't make anything in Lagos. And we're like, then, as a three years ago, you don't want to come to Lagos. I said, yes. I said, okay. He booked my flight and she, I saw myself in Lagos. So when I got to Lagos, that's when I knew that people were actually feeding from content creating. Mm. Uh, when I was doing stand-up comedy, I was doing stand-up comedy, I was doing up to like three other jobs. And I was like, what is actually happening here? So it was after I met Sabinus and I said to myself, comedy is going to feed me. I can't be making people laugh and I'm sad. I said, I said to myself, comedy is going to feed me. So I quit everything I was doing. My parents were like, don't ask us for food, though. This small work where they work night, then they go stop them. I said, Mom, this, this comedy is feeding people. Why won't it feed me? So I had to quit it. And I was, I got like two times focused then. Yeah, I started bringing food to the table. So when I went to Lagos, I saw people driving cars and I'd be like, how did he buy? They say it's content creating. See somebody putting on the luxury watch. How did you get this? It's content creating. And I will break it down how they got it. And you're seeing, you, like, these are not like out of the blue. They give you a track record of how the money came. I was like, so I'm not using chop money now. They put a they suffer. Oh, yeah. So I was like, okay, let's do this. I'm serious now. So I came back to put a and started working twice as hard. Twice as hard. That's the key word, twice as hard. Yeah. And uh, it brings me to this other question. I mean, you said you met people, you met fellow colleagues that, you know, were buying luxury cars and luxury watches and you, you literally had to ask questions. Okay, how, what are you doing that I'm not doing? Like, what's, what's different? And then they broke it down for you. Now, it brings us to this stereotype. A lot of us have, as pertaining to content creators, mostly skip makers, because you see one today, he's celebrating a car he just bought for over 100 million. The other one is buying a Benz. The other is buying a Prado. And people literally, it, it, it gets so heated on Twitter. And people are like, what the hell? These people are actually fraudulent, but they're fronting it with content creation, skip making and all of that. But we have also heard people like Sabinus and some other ones come up, you know, Taoma and all of that. They've come up to say, um, no, we actually make money from this thing. So how can you be able to debunk that whole stereotype? What don't we know? You cannot be five into skip making and still going to fraud. Mm. Fraud needs time, dedication, seriousness, attention. You need to know when a client is there online. 
You know, if they shoot video, they don't take paste account, you know, they're online. So, and for, so to be a content creator, a, a consistent content creator, you be posting three to four videos in a week. Mm. For me, I post Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Sometimes I just add one on Sunday. So I post minimal three, maximum four times a week. You're thinking the idea, you're coming up with the idea, you're shooting the idea, you're editing the idea. You're scripting. Yeah, you are script. We don't use scripts. You're attending. Oh, it's just spontaneous. Team surveillance will not use scripts. It's just spontaneous. There's <laughs> Everything no, you now see us put out on the internet. We don't write paper. We just tell you what to do. <laughs> and you just do it. Yeah. And here I was thinking there was a script to it. Who gets strength? <laughs> <laughs> Did, my boss, if you want to tell my boss a story, you give him a script, tell him no. Explain. Okay. When you're done, but let's go and shoot. We, That's we, know, it. we know what to do. So that I'll just tell both of you, you guys will be quarreling and I'll be coming. They won't tell you what to quarrel on. Just start just quarreling. Just quarrel. Yeah. So I might just be like, why go talk to Asin and know the play with? <laughs> then the next one knows what to say. Just pick up, we'll have an argument. That's it. <laughs> This is Nollywood on steroids, <laughs> literally. And then it brings me even to one of your skits, um, the one that you did. Um, I think you have this character as a man. Yeah, I'm the baby. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, so I watched that particular skit and I'm like, okay, this is, this is something that actually does happen. You know, but I, I, first of all, I didn't necessarily know that the name of such persons, you know, was as a man. Okay. I got to know that from, from, from the skit and all of that, you know, that there are people who actually do that. So you were actually enlightening people to the fact that there are these fraudulent people out there who would post to be, you know, what they're not. But that was so funny. That was so funny. And then okay. I'm like, this is not scripted? No, no none of it. So it's... you just tell them, you, you're the Chinese man. You, that's all. We're shooting this. I'm an as a man. That's it. Yeah, you're, Let's the go. you're the Chinese man. When he come in, when he's done saying this, just say any Chinese word that will come out of your mouth. I would reply. You go. Just we just break it down, and everybody knows what to do because wow. they're in the system, so you know what to do. Okay, interesting. Okay, so it brings me to the question: um, What makes you so different as a content creator? Because literally every day we are littered with content it is so much out there what to watch okay. you know so what what makes one that the talk so different Firstly, from others one of my major differences is that i'm the son of an investor <laughs> okay you don't know okay yeah it's the the, the sabinus thing right yeah f firstly this sabinus right. thing there's there's a grace that works in his life that kind of works in the life of everybody that works with him interesting yeah as far as he's sharing his joy the grace will rub on you so I love that. Yeah, so mm. that's number one. Then number two, whenever I'm in front of the camera, I'm serious. That's not a place to joke. You don't know who's watching. Right. You don't right. know who's watching. So you shouldn't be laughing. Put in energy. Be serious. Then um, I think... It is work to you. Yes. It is It is serious work. So he brings food to the table. He has me sort my parents' view. So it's work to me. Yeah. So if I'm, from, if I'm at the front of the camera, I'm so serious. I put in my best, I try to avoid mistakes. Mm. Then I kind of include word plays. Word plays sounds very nice too. When people are watching a video and you are playing with word. Okay, for instance, this as a man video I did, I was like, oh, you did my head. Even my head off is all you mean. Yeah, See I the word play. <laughs> I'm the son of a praying mother. My mama, they pray, they walk, and I walk and pray. So when it kind of rhyme words like that, it kind of stays. People, yes, yeah. interest people. People like, oh, man, so I like your word play and they want to watch you more. So, but literally, the difference is just God's grace. Mm, mm. Yeah. Interesting. So, um, how, how, what, what do you think about the sustainability of content creation as a career path? Is it sustainable? Is it here to stay? Okay, firstly, not just, okay, content creation is a sub of comedy. Mm, right? It's a okay. sub of comedy. Comedy, generally, they have the accent comedy, what they call it, they have comedy movies, they have the content creation, the people that make short clips. They'll have um, the stand-up comedian. So, the three... Stand-up comedy is a career part. Content creating is a career part. Acting, just the way acting, TV hosts, those are all, is a very easy career part because you get paid for your services. The more relevant you become, the more value you have. And people exchange value for value. You have mm. money. I have people know me. You bring your money. I tell it. Give me, give me your money and the product. Mm. I tell it to my people. Are you pay me for it? Mm. Interesting. So you just basically exchange of value. So if you can build value, how do you build this value? You get to like gather the fan base. Once you gather the fan base, brands will be attracted to you because currently probably let's just say a good amount of people is looking towards you. 
brands will come and they give you your token and you're okay. So, so <clears throat> I mean, absolutely, you see younger people um, literally coming out to say, oh, I want to be a YouTuber, I want to be a content creator, you know, so now it's like a thing, everybody's excited about it. Mm -hmm. So, you would encourage younger ones to actually see it as a viable career path. Yeah, it's a viable career path. That's if you like it. Don't do, it, don't do something you don't like. I feel, I don't know how people started with Rebel. I feel anything you don't enjoy doing, you shouldn't even start doing it at the first place, right? So if you enjoy content creating, for me, I love making people laugh. Whenever I post a video, I go to the comment section to see if people, if people like it. I don't post video and start doing a broadcast message and telling my friends, go and comment, uploading a new mm -hmm. video. No? I don't force you to comment. I want to see your natural reaction to that post. And I want to see if you like it. If I was just there for the money, right, I don't care what I put out online, but trying to put out the best. So if people tell me this video is not funny, if 10 persons say it, it affects my mood the entire day. So I'm not just the money-minded. I love what I do. So I want you to love what I do as well. So firstly, in as much as it's a viable career path, you need to love you it first. You need to love it. Mm. Because you can't start content creating one dance. That's say 1,000. It took me two years before I, get, I got monetized on Facebook. Two good years. Wow. Some persons can't wait that long. You, you give up. Imagine doing, shooting, making videos every day and you've never seen a penny from it. Wow. Two years before I go monetize on Facebook. So persons can't wait that long. That doesn't mean it takes everybody two years, right? Some persons get monetized in three months, in two months. Well, it took me two years. What kept me going? The passion. I wasn't there for the money. But were you, were you working something else at the same time? At least something that was helping to okay. provide a communion for you? I said, um, I stopped everything I was doing to focus during all those points, I was struggling, right? Everybody's story is different, but Sabinos was there. He was like the backbone. I could call him like any time, say, boss, I beg, I won't die. Even on a 5K, he would send 30. Say, Baba, help me. Then they, I, started, I, I just come up with stories. I say, boss, boss, if you don't send that now, if you don't see me again. <laughs> <laughs> I will just send that drop account number. So he kept me because I, I took a decision not to like... Because you need to take giant steps, right? I, I want you to be very focused. I saw people eating from it. Why won't it feed me too? So I was like, you stop. I was selling, I was um, hooking drugs, and not like drugs, medicine, warm expeller, diclofenac and potassium tablets. That's for the painkillers, multivitamins and mineral capsule, Iguedo Goku cleanser. I was actually part of people selling those things in Potaco City, roaming around in buses, using a bar road, so on and so forth, right? I was doing that and I was doing comedy skits. I was like, what is actually happening? Why will I be entertaining people and at the end of the day I was be selling medicines in public vehicles. It got to a point somebody was like, sorry, I thought you wanted to buy me. I was like, are you not the person I saw with? I said, it's me. So what are you doing here? I was like, bro, this is not too much. I need to focus. So I had to like stop here and focus. Then it was difficult at first, but I skilled through. Wow. All right. So you, I mean, you have done a lot. And then you're saying that you sold medicine, and then I'm hearing Iguedo Coco cleanse. <laughs> and I'm literally wondering it, it, what that is. You know, <laughs> the, the, literally every junction in Potaco, you always be, you always hear, if you if you if you let it, you crew, let you bite you, you, you get itching for body, you wake up for morning, that's always going to pay you. You need social medicine. <laughs> I didn't know that now. Horse is waiting no good. Advertise medicine, eh? Somebody will be like, this one medicine, they handle everything. I say, try and first. <laughs> two shots in the morning, two shots in the night. If you finish one, you know what? Come for the second one. If you take two, you know how no more see results. <laughs> so I did all of that, right? So I was doing that. I'd missed um, stand-up comedy, content creating, and so on and so forth. So I just woke up one morning. I said, no, enough is enough. This comedy, I'm going to eat from. It has to pay. It has mm. to pay. And, and I mean, even, even you selling that cleanser, it did not necessarily turn out to be a loss in the sense that now you're saying that even on the Sabinus team, um, literally every advertisement is left to you to handle okay, because uh, you literally can sell anything. Yeah, I kind of take most, most of the adverts part, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, I think Sabinus knows. I told him there was a time when I was selling medicine, there was a time my business went very bad according. He's actually sent me money to buy more medicine to continue my business. <laughs> that was how supportive he was. Right? He, he literally comes into your personal affairs. It's not just wow. the comedy stuff. He comes into your personal affairs, comes into your family problem. He just, he kind of, if you're, if you're with him, you're with him all around. So outside the workspace, he's like a father. That's why I call him my daddy. So, um, where was I? <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know. So just, I'll just take you back. I mean, you literally answered the question anyway. So I'll just take you um, to the next question. Now, the role of government support, both on a federal level, on a state level, cannot be underemphasized. Sure. The creative and entertainment industry is a huge industry. The, the whole media sector is huge. I mean, literally, when we look at statistics of the revenue um, that they bring in that particular sector, that particular industry, it's, it's, it's huge. And imagine if we had the ample support needed. For example, um, during Jonathan's time, there was a grant set up, you know, for that particular sector. But even at that, I, I don't think it was properly um, utilized. But now bringing it to now and um, now, now and in this time we have places like you know the Lagos state government those people are doing like massively well especially with the entertainment um, industry but what are the other states not getting right okay literally, bringing it home to river states as well you wonder why a lot of entertainers tend to in several parts of the world after a little limelight they tend to travel mm -hmm. and go to Lagos that's what they want to maintain they want to sustain their business there's so much support in that state, yeah. especially for Yoruba. But even if you're not Yoruba, if you know what you're doing, they're going to welcome you, right? There's so much support. You go to a comedy event and you see the governor there. Even when he doesn't come, you just send you money. I, that, there was a time I heard, um, is it FIRS or so? There's a time I heard, you want to organize events, if you know your way, government could even give you up to 10 million support. That is in Lagos State. Brands get to support you. How many, how many, apart from some real estate companies, how many companies in Portacot have brand ambassadors that are Portacot people? Mm. How many? How many are even interested? I, my event one dash and never end. I know how many companies were like, ah, look, I'm going to support you. Mm, one that I support you, no see. Very few supports. This is the likes of uh, Portland Hotel and some other, uh, um, Odibolo Properties and some other um, brands that came through to support me. Some, even some, some of the support I had were not from River State. Some people were supporting me from Philadelphia, U.S., Enugu, and several parts. But I'm a Portaco boy doing mm. a show in Portaco. Mm -hmm. But then Portaco mm -hmm. brands are like, let's see what he's going to do. Wow. The support system is very, very poor. Even the government are acting as if they are not sane. They will celebrate others, but not celebrate their own. I use my boss as a case study. My boss, Sabinos, won AMVCA, Content Creator of the Year. African Viewer's Choice African award. Magic Viewers Choice, Choice Award. award. Mm -hmm. That award is a very big award. Uh, people win it in several parts in several parts of the country, and they get celebrated by the local government, celebrated by their government. My boss won that award as big as AMVCA. He won that award and came back. It is us, his team members, that went to pick him from the airport. No congratulatory message from the government. Nobody cares. Nobody cares if you like go win anything, come back. But that boy, nobody can answer you. But people that want a different, uh, different um, sectors of the award in Lagos, come. You want to see celebration. You want to see parties. Not by them, by the government. They will celebrate you. Even people that go to Big Brother, they don't win you just to return from Big Brother. You see that the government are celebrating them. Next picture than the government house. Snapping picture. Next they've made them essay to something. Potako. <laughs> so literally, we are the only ones supporting ourselves. Mm -hmm. Comedians supporting comedian, musicians supporting musician. We are not waiting for the government. We are not waiting for the government. That but is we are such supporting a, ourselves. It's such a sad so note. We are, we are, we are, literally, for me, mm. I just talked to the brands in the city to like, don't undermine the entertainment sector. Let's collaborate together and exchange values. It will work better that way. What what better ways can the state government actually play a role in supporting? Okay, there was what they call Kani River in Portacourt. Where, yeah. where is it now? Hmm. That was the platform. That was an avenue where Portacourt creators, Portacourt musicians get a chance been able to, to meet even the larger face, yes. right? Mm. Because the, currently now the biggest events in Portacourt is the Bole Festival, mm. my bossy show, Sabino's Life in Portacourt, and mine. Those are literally the biggest events in the city now. The Kani River that was sponsored by the government that pays well. Because I believe even if you're a young boy climbing that stage and you are built to perform there, the least 500 can go to you. And that's a huge empowerment. I don't even understand, but mm. the Kani Reef is no longer there. So even the person that is organizing Bole Festival is an individual, not the government. Even the government for don't fall to. So why? Why is it like that? It's so unfortunate. And um, we hope that they do a need for I mean, we're in a new dispensation. They need we're, to we're because hoping. the comedians are paying tasks. 
pay tax, pay electricity bill, do this and do that, but the government is not directly supporting the source of their income. Mm. They need to do better. They can do better. They just that. Even create know. better policies on the federal level, create better policies to be able to ensure that, you know, with the little that people are doing in their own corners, they can be able to feed off of it and be able to give their quota. That's I true. mean, you were telling me even um, behind the, um, the stage that uh, um, the, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, you know, basically was looking at monetizing certain platforms. Nigeria, and Nigeria, 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 Nigeria as a country is not eligible for monetization mm -hmm. on you some platforms. So. Yeah. So the only, I think you're going to need to monetize YouTube here. Facebook, you can't monetize it. Why? Don't you think the government, if the government, the government can make this work. They can actually make this work if they want to make it work. Nothing is impossible. Yeah. You can reach out to Mark, say, why, why is my country not monetized? A lot of people are using Facebook here, but you're not paying us. Mark will pay attention to it. Mark visited Nigeria. Why did he come? Meta meeting, Kratos meeting, blah, 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 blah. You're not going to get ahead again. You can go back. So if Nigerians want this thing to work, I, I just feel they don't want the youth to succeed. Yeah. I don't feel, I just feel they don't, I don't know why they're scared of the youth. They don't want us to succeed. If they want to make this work, it is going to work. It is going to work if they want to make it work. But they're not interested. It's a youth. If it's not, if not there, if it will not happen since. But since it's what will benefit the youth, that they're not interested. Well, we hope at the end of the day that um, this will change because we're in a dispensation. We're at a time where um, one of the particular mantras of the president is to ensure that he actively supports um, the youth and creates an enabling environment for us to be able to thrive. So we will be banking on that. And Amen. he just started. We'll Amen. be banking on that to see Amen. that it happens. I mean, even the Minister of, Digi of, of Digital Economy, you know, is a youth. And uh, we're looking at how, you know, those areas can amply um, have some advantage, you know, as, as to us, um, the youth, in various aspects. Okay, so I'll just bring this question to you, what your projections are you know, for the creative um, industry um, in the next, say, four years here in Nigeria? What are your projections? Where do you see us? Okay, literally, Nigerians are, Nigerians are very phenomenal people. In any field, you, you find them, they are doing wonderfully well. A serious Nigerian can do the undoable. A serious one, Nigerian can do the undoable. In, go to several countries. Nigerians, in fact, Nigerians are littered around the globe, and they are doing well. Music, mm -hmm. Bona Boy. You can't, you can't, Afrobeats, we're taking it to the world. Even the Westerners are vibing to our songs. Nigerians are doing well in the music industry. Nigerians are doing well in comedy industry. Nigerians are doing well in content creating. And whatever the Nigerian youth are part that the government has no power over is doing well. Once the government has power, so much power over it, it's own itself. They will pull it, they will add politics to it. But this music industry is being handled by youth. The comedy industry is being handled by youth. Content creating industry is being handled by youth. It is going well. So maybe not to put hands up. Maybe no, maybe leave us. I beg, I beg. Add hand, I think we begin for. I beg, I beg. So basically, I mean, you see, in a couple of years' time, we're taking over, taking over taking on a global over. stage. Music, comedy, mm. country creating, we're taking right. over. And Nigerians, Nigeria in our numbers, is taking over. Right. Okay. So let's bring it down to you. Wonder the talk. What should we look forward to in the next three years from you? Okay. Um, see a better version of me. Uh -oh. Better version of me. Very incredible content, you know, collaborations. More shows, more international shows, collaborations international and collaborations all of that. And so on and so forth. Literally, mm. just, each, each step will be a surprise, so just be looking forward to it. Right, interesting. We will look at it. We will look forward to it. Definitely, we're wishing you all the best Thank as well. Thank you so much. And then, so lastly, let's just wrap this up. What three words of advice would you give to any young person wanting to tow the whole content creation path? Okay, um, firstly, stop making excuses. Stop, just stop Use it. your friend's iPhone. Just stop it. <laughs> there, there, there are a lot of excuses. One, I no get iPhone. Two, nobody to carry me along. Stop it. Nobody to give me money. There's nobody no money to carry me ground. along. Nobody to shoot at me. Can you, if you want to make excuses, there are, good, there are millions of excuses. If you don't want to make two, you can equally forge ahead. Stop making excuses. So will be like, ah, don't carry me along. I say, why? They say, no, Sabine is the carry you along. That's fine. That's me. Our grace will be the same. There are a lot of content creators that I don't know who carried them along. I just mm. saw them. Funny Bros is an example. Who was he working with? You can't mention anybody, but you can mention Funny Bros. OG Bricent, the one they call the cultist, is another example. So you can actually be those people. 
there's this mentality we have, especially in Port Harcourt, this carry along mentality. It limited me a lot. I felt there was a time in my life I felt somebody needed to call me. Mm -hmm. I needed to know somebody for me to actually make a step. It was when I went to Lagos, I discovered nobody needs to call you. You, know, you need to call yourself. Wake up in the morning, leave and your go. bed, and go and walk. Right. Now, this is how it happens, right? Before I met Sabinus, I used to wait. I used to work with Dr. V. Dr. Virus is a, Dr. V is a stand-up comedian in Hepatacord. I started, he was actually the one I was working with initially before I met Sabinus, right? So, we tend to make videos together. If he doesn't call me, I don't have a video. Oh. So, I was just hoping and calling him, when next are we going to shoot? When next are we going to shoot, right? But when I, when I went to Lagos, so I've been also call people to make videos, right? Once he's done with his own, the next person there will start making his own. Once that person is done, the other person will start to like, everybody's working. Nobody's waiting for anybody. I'm like, yeah. Now they are the way they call me. I go back to Portal, I started making calls. Bro, come on, shoot. So I was not even waiting for you to call me to make a video. I'll call you, let's make the video. So stop waiting for somebody to carry you. Get yourself an iPhone. If you know get, you know people will get. Literally, everybody has an iPhone, self. Make videos. Download InShot app. That's what we used to cut. Cut your videos, post it on the internet. If it is funny, people is going to watch. They will press the share button. One view, two views, one thousand views, two thousand views, ten thousand views, hundred thousand views. Before you go do yourself, you know, you need anybody to carry along again. You can actually make very good videos, right? And if video go go viral, even the person where they hoping go carry along could come be your fan. Like carry me along as well. <laughs> now, person will reach out to you, say, ah, bro, um, this is your content. Ma yeah. like, like, for example, you did a police video that went viral. Mm. They'll be like, bro, this is your police content, mad, though. The person that you, you see that is at the top of call, mm. you can wait the police video together. That is you pushing yourself. But if you are waiting for somebody to carry you, you are just writing people on Instagram, you DM Nas Boy, but boss, please, I want to shoot a video with you. Can you just start first? I mean, like, I mean, even this that you're saying, a typical example is um, Bovi. Recently, there was, I think he's promoting one of his shows, um, upcoming um, shows. And then he, he did a, a, a comedy, should I call it a comedy skit? The in like the Sabinus. person of Sabinus, he was. And I'm like, that was literally, and Bobby was there way before Ooh. Sabinus. So I saw that it's imagine literally what you're talking for, about. Imagine Sabinus literally yeah. wasn't waiting for anybody to carry. Mm. This advice is coming from his story, mm. right? He wasn't really waiting for somebody to carry him along. Mm. In as much as no man is an island, they can't do it alone. But stop waiting on people. Right. Stop waiting on people. Walk as if you don't get help, then help will come along the line. Mm. But if you're waiting for somebody to carry you, you might not see. But if they start, help will come. So the young creators out there, instead of you to waste your time and energy and be looking for one celebrity to lean on, why not start small? Once your content are good, even those celebrities will notice you. So even when you tell them, let us shoot, it won't be like you're begging. It will be like mm. you're collaborating because you're good too. That's number one is to start first. Then number two is to tell yourself the truth. There's a word that says that anything worth doing is worth doing well. Mm -hmm. Before you wake up in the morning, call people, gather them under the sun to make a video. You don't first ask yourself, this story is sweet. <laughs> tell yourself the truth. My boss, for, for instance, he has... You could have 10,000 stories and shoot only two. Those are the funniest. Mm. And you'd be like, Sabine is all in video and I'm mad. Yes, because it was properly selected. Not be every idea went to your head, you go rush, go shoot them. No. Now, okay, that's, things, that's what I usually tell people. They'd be like, on the car, I'd be like, who are you looking up to? They say, Sabine I say, good. I say, Give, show me your video. Wait for me to reach Sabine on. Say, none of them. I say, you're not looking up to him. You can't call somebody your mentor. You're not even, you're not even working close to. You're not even having at least I'm not little results that is close to his. Tell yourself the truth. Before I shoot any skit, I, I tell it to my friends. I say this criticize me, tell me the real truth, no pet mm. me. I say this story. If I tell you a story, I don't laugh to it. I don't even find it worthy of being shot. Wow. Before the video makes you laugh, let the raw story what, what make you laugh. What if my trouble is too much for your for your comedy and then I can't laugh at it? I will tell at least I need to tell you to like five persons and like get their feedback, right? I don't just wake up in the morning and start shooting anything. Just right. the way my boss does. He doesn't wake up. You could tell him a story. He just say, I'm all, I know to feel him. Right, right. You right. select it. Mm. So if you are doing, if you are pulling out the content, make it good because I might judge you with your first video. I feel you until I pay the first thing I see to make me laugh and I'll watch again. But if you, if, you are, if you are consistent with pulling out good content, I want the first one. Wow. Second one, wow. Third one, wow. I don't click, click the follow button. Mm, okay. If I'm a brand, I will just send you a DM. Right. What will it take to collaborate? What will it take to do business with you? Mm -hmm. Brands are equally looking for funny people, creative people, right. not just any, any, any video. So secondly... Number three. 
Se- number second one, one is st- telling yourself okay. the truth. Yeah. yeah. Number three, which is supposed to be number one, sorry, is putting God first. Mm. But I just, I just, I just, I just had to say start first because I get a lot of DMs on the car. Let's work with you. Let's work with you. Let's work with you. In Team Sabinus, right, we have 27 to 37 persons in Team Sabinus. So I'm working with a, 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 a huge number of persons already. Where I want to enter? You want to be in number 38, I'll be in number 39. Inside the 37 people, not even all face don't show. So we are still struggling to come up. And you see, you see they disturb me, say you won't join. Start. Start your own. You can actually start. So the, the, number three, which is number one, put God first and be consistent. Not be do today, tomorrow, you know, do. Out of sight is out of mind. Mm. They need to be seeing you. Consistently. Not doing video once in a month and not get a chance. If you don't get a chance, rest. That's why I quit what I was doing and I focused. Thank you so much. Thank you. This so has much. been so interesting. The last one you said really hit. If you don't get a chance, rest. <laughs> Just <Yes>. rest. <laughs> <Maybe stop people. laughs> it has really been amazing having this conversation with you. I've literally been loving from the start to the Thank finish. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I wish you all the best. Thank you and, so much. Um, in all you do and your boss, Sabinus, as well. Meanwhile, this remains Staff Exclusive. This is Staff TV. You know you have to follow us on all socials because we have a lot more of such content to come your way. Don't go anywhere, even as we will bring you more of this on the other avenues that we have to bring you entertainment and all educative contents that they are. At the end of the day, I'm still your host, Natasha Brown. And remember the three words of advice Wonder the Talk said to you. Start, put God first, stay consistent, and also, no excuses? No excuses. Come up with good content. Come up with good content. All right, then. Bye for now. And yeah. <laughs>